Hello, this is Coach Tim Campbell, and I'm your host for the Self Made as a Myth, Make a Difference Together show, where we're talking with successful business owners about their journey to building their business. And because we know that achieving success in business is not something that we can do on our own, we're taking time to recognize the folks that helped us to excel. Today, I'm excited to have a fellow business owner from Indiana with us today. My guest cares more about how well folks understand what he is communicating to them as opposed to how they might react to that communication, uh, which is very interesting. We'll get into that maybe here in a little bit. In his downtime, he enjoys uh, spending time with his girls and researching a whole bunch of different things to just learn more about how the world exists uh, or how the world that we exist in operates and different aspects of it. Uh, and he is a very proud uh, father, and uh, he shared with me that um, it's the scariest thing he's ever done, but it's also the proudest thing he's done as he watches his his children grow up. It is my pleasure to welcome Alex to the show today. Hello, Alex. Hi, Tim. How are you, sir? I am awesome. Thank you so much for asking. Well, hey, let's start with um, you uh, introducing yourself. Tell us a little bit of your personal story, like uh, where you were born, where you live, and about your family and hobbies. All right. Yeah, I uh, was born and raised right here in Kokomo, Indiana, where uh, my wife, Allie, and my two daughters, uh, Hannah and Haley, uh, we still live here, still operate business out of here. Um, beautiful little small, big town. Uh, perfect for raising a family, low cost of living, low taxes. So it's really hard to beat. There's some, some people might complain there's not enough to do, but once you get to our age and have a couple of kids, that's not so much. <laughs> that, that goes down in importance. Um, I mean, 10 years ago, if you would have said, you know, hey, you're going to be a husband and a father to two girls, I would have probably looked at, at you like you had two heads. <laughs> uh, I never would have imagined I would be married with, with two kids, let alone two daughters. Uh, but it's uh, the most stressful and rewarding thing simultaneously that I've done. So I'm very That's happy awesome. with that. <laughs> Fantastic. So um, besides, I know you've mentioned earlier that um, your youngest just turned three. So there's probably not a whole lot of time for hobbies, but what do you enjoy doing uh, when you do have some free time? Um, not as much as I used to. <laughs> I, I, I do try to keep busy with a number of nonprofits. Uh, there's a, a couple of them that I'm involved in that I do a lot of work with. I'm very proud of for the work that they do. Um after having kids, you know, the, uh, the amount of time and money that and energy you have for hobbies dwindles. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I, I decided, you know, I'm going to take up uh, working with some nonprofits and, you know, working, yeah. doing some other things. So, you know, making sure that uh, uh, my kids understand that the time that I am away working that, you know, daddy is at least doing something. Uh, somewhat important and a little bit world changing. Not not much, but a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. So, Alex, is there a funny story that your family likes to tell about you that you'd be willing to share with us today? Uh, I'm sure probably everybody has the uh, my mother story, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so, to this day, almost 40 years later, my mother still tells people uh, that I missed my calling and I should have been an attorney. Um, for two reasons, she says you could your your slogan could be "Have mouth will travel," <laughs> uh, and she says the other reason is um, eventually you are always right. Nice. And so I said, "Yeah, okay." But uh, when I now that I've worked with a number of attorneys over the years, um, I'm very happy I did not choose that profession as much. <laughs> As much as she may disagree, I'm I'm happy I didn't. But yeah, that's yes. <laughs> that's the one that 40 years later, it's, you missed your calling. You should have been an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> so it, one could take those two things as both compliments and and not. So it's uh, it's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that's how mothers work, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex, that's... tell us um, how the business came about, and at what point did you have the confidence that you could run your own business? Um, so bro growing up living in a roughly small city with about 60,000 people, uh, we're four hours any direction from 
you know, Indianapolis, Chicago, Detroit, Louisville, uh, Columbus. Mm. Um, you know, I kind of felt that there was a, a need for uh, small and medium sized businesses to have a little bit more affordable option when it came to physical security, mm. um, you know, for their cameras and alarms and access control, things like that. Um, and so I started calling around to the big dogs to do some pricing and, you know, just, Hey, this is what I've got. And, you know, for this, this and this, um, and found that the price difference between the small companies and the big companies was, you know, drastic. Even the regional size companies, uh, like one that starts with a K here based in Indiana, um, the price difference between the the medium and large size companies and small size companies was pretty big. Mm. Um, so I decided that I was going to on the weekends go out to Radio Shack if that dates enough <laughs> uh, and buy equipment, hardware, cables, and start putting in cameras for friends and family. Yeah, uh, <laughs> realizing that you know my house is more forgiving for drilling the wrong hole than other people's. Um, <laughs> And so it was kind of just really back and forth doing friends and family houses. And eventually I thought, you know, this has got to get to the point to where it's an actual business and not a side hobby. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of pacing back and forth in my kitchen. And uh, I had a uh, Siberian Husky, long time dog. I had him for a long time. And he started talking, as Huskies are known to do, that he wanted to go outside. <laughs> and so I was thinking of a name for the company. I was like, I already got security solutions, but I needed something catchy, you know. And he was, you know, kept talking. And I looked at him and I said, Maverick, be quiet. I'm trying to think. And that was my eureka moment. I thought Maverick <laughs> Security Solutions. There it is. Um, even our Shield logo at the time I had designed was a, a, a faux silhouette of him. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> so. It was probably about four years later, was, um, about 2013, I was working at a car dealership at the time. And um, the owner had, ca had called me into the office and he said, you need to pick one. Mm. And at first I didn't understand what he was talking about because, you know, I, di I didn't think it was really interfering with my day job. But apparently uh -huh. while I had both my feet in my regular job. My brain was completely invested uh in in this new budding business sure uh so he said pick one and i said okay well i i guess i'm gonna pick you know running my business <laughs> uh he was kind enough to um eliminate my position so i was able to collect about six months of unemployment benefits oh great um which really helped i mean it's like 314 dollars a week you know it wasn't much but you know, it was better than a swift kick in the rear end out the door. And okay, you made your choice. Bye. Um, so by him doing that, I wouldn't say that was confident. I spent a lot of nights staring at the ceiling, <laughs> wondering how I'm going to fail, just how bad this is going to fail and how long before I'm knocking on his door. <laughs> hey, can I have my job back? Um, but I knew that I had, um, I, 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 I didn't realize just how many people at first. But I do, I, I knew that I had people that I could rely on and lean on to kind of guide me and, and give me a little bit of help here and there. And so uh, that boss at the time was the first one where it was kind of like, okay, here it is, make a choice. And I did. And again, I don't know if I was confident at the time, but uh, I did it. So it's kind of. Yeah. We're going to do this. There you go. Yes. And for everyone listening, when he s said that the dog talk, he didn't mean in English, right? He meant no, he... dog language. <laughs> Huskies are very well known for their vocal abilities. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you do pick up on some things. You start to figure out what they mean, what they, by how they're <laughs> whining and talking at you. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Alex, tell us a little bit more about the company. I know it's uh, evolved um, a little bit over the years. So um, what do you do now and, and how do you help folks? So I for, I spent the first you know few years just like everybody else, you know, wearing every single hat, service, sales, project manager, installation, bookkeeping, secretary, everything. Um, you know, we had, I, I want to say our gross sales had, had topped 100,000 for the first time, I believe it was 2014. Um, and I knew at that point I needed help. Like I couldn't do all of this by myself. So 
Um, started looking around, started hiring some technicians, uh, poaching them from other companies uh, at first because I needed guys with experience. I didn't have time to hold hands. Yeah. Um, and so by 2016, I think I was turned down, I'd say roughly six banks um, for loans, you know, lines of credit to expand and have that capital to really expand. Um, and then a brother of a, a commercial client of mine who had done cameras and an alarm system for his uh, restaurant. His brother was a loan officer at a local bank. Hmm. And I was talking with this client and said, you know, man, I just really wish I had this capital to expand. This is, you know, and he says, well, you know, I, I might know a guy. Uh, so he called his brother. His brother called me. And uh, I won't say what bank, but he said, I shouldn't be doing this. And I could get fired for this. But <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to give you, you know, 15,000. On a, on a small business loan and, yeah. and, you know, see what you can do with that. We'll, we'll start at that 15,000, which at the time, you know, 15,000 might as well have been 15 million. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> just a, an absolute game changing amount of money. I was able to buy a couple of used work vans for the technicians to work out of. So we didn't have to keep trading and sharing, um, hire another full-time technician, sales secretary, um, by 2018, we had four full-time, two part-time technicians, two full-time salespeople, uh, dedicated project manager, uh, and an administrative assistant. Um, everybody putting in the hours for us to have the ability to pretty much handle any job that came our way. Right. Um, so we were offering the same equipment and the same installation times as the medium and big size companies, but for about 30% less. Mm. Uh, and the same quality as well. You know? And so a lot of times our quality was better sure. um, because we didn't have the constant rat race of, okay, moving on to the next job. You know, we yeah. took, we were able to take our time a little bit more than the bigger guys. Yeah. Um, later in 2019, uh, when the uh, tariffs and trade wars started heating up and security equipment got on the block and they were talking about 30% tariffs, I thought, you know, that's, that's the death knell for us because our 30% margin under the competition is going to get eaten up by equipment costs. Sure. Um, and so I decided, you know what, um, well, there's also to the DIY market 2019, you have, you know, ring and nest and simply safe. And, you know, people are buying stuff online and building their own system and sure. ship right to their door. Um, so I decided, you know what, let's, let's shift gears from integration and installation and service. To consulting um, so I worked with and the contacts I had made in the industry we got all of our technicians employed um, I, every one of them was making more money and getting better benefits because they went to bigger companies yeah. so that was a big benefit for them uh, project manager was the same way salespeople um, admin assistant they were all able to get resettled making more money better benefits so very that was my big key thing mm. um, and then we basically just transitioned from, you know, Maverick Security Solutions uh, Systems Integrator to Maverick Secured Physical Security Consultant. Mm. And luckily enough, by 2020 with COVID coming around in 2020, we had already made the transition. So mm. while other companies were struggling, um, I was doing okay. I was doing okay. And, and I'm very happy that I made the transition when I did. And there was absolutely no foresight. It was 100% luck <laughs> dumb blind completely stupid luck that I, that, that I did that at that time sure yeah so what do you how do you help people now what does uh what does the consulting side mean in terms of the service you provide so we come into small and medium-sized businesses um, we take a look at the full ecosystem of physical safety and security so that, and that doesn't just include the equipment that's installed. It's also the people and the process and the procedures. Um, so we'll come in and do a full audit, make sure that all of their equipment is, you know, usable, new, or new enough. We follow the Bill Clinton rule. Uh, if any of any of their equipment was installed uh, during any time Bill Clinton was in office, it's 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 old and it needs to be replaced because <laughs> uh, it'll probably cost more to keep it working than it would be just to replace it. Sure. <laughs> um, and then we look at the employees. And make sure that, you know, uh, the, the people in the building, you know, do they know how to respond to different emergencies? Mm. Um, 
And we find a lot of times they don't. They don't have a plan or they do have a plan, but it's never been practiced. Um, so we work with the client and we build a full audit of their ecosystem from safety, security, planning process, procedures, people, you know, top to bottom. Um, and then in 2017, I partnered with a, a local secure or a solar integrator, excuse me, solar integrator, green alternatives. Um, and so we launched a partnership called Equinox Site Security, uh, where we have a proprietary automated platform that um, we lease to uh, large property development firms and large general contracting companies uh, to protect their projects under construction from intrusion, fire and water damage okay. uh, during the phases of construction. Mm. Um, and so that's been, and I'm the managing partner, but I have a minority stake. Um, that's been very rewarding to kind of see, uh, you know, a lot of the same style of building and size of buildings that we had been, I've been working in, my company had been working in doing installations that have been built for 50 years, right. seeing what those look like from the ground up being built on the inside. Yeah. And it, it kind of opened my eyes. It's like, this is when we should have been, we should have been looking for this type right. of work all along. <laughs> like we should have been getting in during the construction phase, not 50 sure. years later. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what we're doing now. And it's, it's uh, very rewarding, um, very stressful a lot of the time as anything else, but it's rewarding. Good. Yeah. So Alex, share a story where someone pushed you or inspired you that you could do it, even though maybe you didn't think you could and the impact that they had on you. Um, definitely Brian Adams, not the singer. Uh, it, Brian Adams was the, uh, the dealership, the car dealership owner that I worked for. Um, if he would never had told me to, to pick one, you know, hit working for him or, or going out on my own. Sure. Um, I probably never would have pursued this full time. I probably would have stayed working for him and just doing stuff for friends and family and then eventually given up on it. Um, and so if it wasn't for him, it would have been and eliminating my position, letting me collect unemployment. Yeah. I probably would have never decided to do this. Um, and then not coincidentally, his car dealership became my first um, at the time, what I considered large commercial client. Yeah. Oh, um, awesome. <laughs> probably I'd say probably two months after I left, he called me and said, Hey, so I got these 16 uh, cameras and this old alarm system. Uh, do you know anybody who could come in and replace all this stuff for me? <laughs> and so I say, yes, I think I know a guy. I think I know a guy. Uh, so awesome. I was very thankful for that, that both of the opportunities that he gave me. Yeah. So, yeah, Brian Adams, if you ever do see this, I can't, I will, I know I've told you a million times, but thank you again. That's awesome. Um, Alex, what's been the biggest learning that you've uh, had as a business owner? I used to have in my office a uh, my office office. I'm in my home office right now. Um, a a framed printed out uh, uh, list that I called Maverick's Laws, uh, you know, like <laughs> Murphy's or Moore's Laws. Yeah, uh, it was about twenty things that I learned over the years. Um, out of those twenty, uh, half of them. Um, contain language I probably shouldn't share. Uh, the one you the can one, send those to me later offline. Yeah, I'll send, yeah, I'll send you the, the PDF. Yeah. Um, I would say probably the one that is the most impactful and it, it 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 resonates across about any industry is the day you've realized you've seen it all in this business is the day you learn something new. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many times, even to this day, I will have, uh, you know, security integrator owners, you know, they're still in the industry. They'll call or text or email and say, hey, I ran into this problem. Here's the situation my client's facing. Here's the problem we're having with the equipment. Have you ever seen anything like this? And I know by the time they've gotten to me, yeah, uh, they've exhausted everything else. And, <laughs> you know, I'm at the very bottom of the list. And so I learned something even to this day, not being an integrator. I, I still learn new stuff um, yeah. every almost every day. And it is again, it's that that mindset we get into. We think, oh, we've done this for so long. We've seen everything. And then we learn something new and it takes us by surprise a lot of times. And yeah. 
sometimes the surprise that takes us by is not a good one. Right. Um, (laughs) But I I definitely learned that every day when I said, okay, now I've seen it all. Yep. I learned something new. Yeah. Yep. It makes me think of, so I I have a coach and, you know, I, I can be coaching my clients and having repeat things coming up with multiple people all week. And then uh, when I meet with my coach, she points it out for me and I'm like, damn it. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Yep. (laughs) Absolutely. So Alex, we know that business success doesn't happen in isolation. So tell us about one of your biggest, biggest challenges during the years and maybe a fellow business owner who came alongside of you and helped you get through that. Uh, Far and away, the biggest challenge I dealt with, um, we had an employee who uh, was not only stealing, but was undermining the company and the company brand simultaneously. Um, I discovered he had taken an invoice and used, I presume, post-it notes or some sort of adhesive paper to cover up the line items um, and then put that in a scanner and made copies of it. So he had basically blank invoices uh, that he was then going um, and filling in by hand and having people, having clients pay him personally. Wow. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And then was using our company accounts to purchase all the equipment to go install on the weekends. Oh. Uh, and then the alarm monitoring, he was adding their monitored alarm system to our central station account. Um, and so I think even he had tried to set up a merchant account to accept cards <laughs> to be deposited directly into his account, but it was a personal account and not a business. So they wouldn't let him. Wow. Uh, that came out during the discovery process and the, the, uh, the, the small, the small claim suit I had to file against him. Um, but, you know, so that was a big challenge because I'd never really dealt with anything like that. Um, and so I was talking to a uh, another security integrator uh, owner, um, and he helped me immensely, really mainly by keeping me focused on cleaning up the mess, yeah. you know, reaching out to those clients uh, that had been bamboozled um, and making sure that we took care of them, you know, because they had an invoice with our company logo. Yeah. They had a contract that they had signed with, you know, our company logo and our terms of service for their monitoring. Right. So I didn't want to leave them out in the cold. I didn't want to have, you know, a bad name attached. So he helped me by keeping me focused on like, hey, stay focused, clean this mess up, take care of the clients. Um, but also by reminding me to not be consumed by my emotions about yes. what had happened yes um that was a big big that was the hardest part by far yeah keeping my cool yes those emotions can get the best of us can't they <laughs> oh man i i had a lot of words that my attorney very wisely advised me to just keep to yourself yeah <laughs> yeah we we've had a we've had a similar experience and and had the same type of advice. So I guess I guess those uh, those people who have lots to say and are always right in the long term are are maybe we should just listen to them, right? Every once in a while, you know, <laughs> hey, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? You know, you, it, it, it swings around eventually. Yeah. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what's the name of that person who helped you? Um, I'm not going to share his name at, okay. at the time right now. Um, he's he's got some. Uh, some 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 personal things and, okay. and some business things that he's going through so no problem all right um, appreciate that. but yeah i keep his name out of the public eye as much as possible for now yeah but i could share it to you later all right so alex if i ask you to pick three people uh in your business owner journey that you're most grateful for being there as part of contributing to your business growth who are those three people and how they help you um the I mean, first and foremost, it's got to be my wife. As cliche as that sounds, yeah. it's true. Um, when we got married in 2015, the business was undergoing a, a big, uh, it was growing through a growth spurt, um, which was very stressful, very <laughs> stressful, needless to say. Um, but, you know, as with any spouse or significant other, you know, she's always been supportive mm. in everything I've done. Um, but... 
she has never once been afraid to question me when I need to rethink a decision. Right. Um, or I need to look at something in a different light. She's, uh, I, I may not always like the way that she says it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she, she does, she says it and it, you know, it resonates and, and it's very helpful to have someone who, you know, lifts you up, but keeps you grounded at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and I know on her part, it's not easy. Uh, cause I, I know I'm a handful. And so I can't <laughs> imagine someone from, from the sidelines legally obligated to deal with my handful. Uh, <laughs> so definitely my wife, Allie, um, my my second one, um, my current business partner, Chris Rahali with Equinox Site Security, um, you know, that whole thing started over a, it was a crazy idea that we started over a cup of coffee one day, uh, him being a, a solar integrator, me being a security integrator. Yeah. Um, it was just like, hey, this is, you know, we're we're made for this meeting and for this idea. Um and he extended an enormous amount of just compassion and understanding when I decided to transition the business from integration to the consulting. Mm. Um, and, and, and by being the, him being the majority owner, uh, right. helped me financially by offering me, uh, early profit draws, you know, to make sure that, you know, I still had, you know, money coming in. Yeah. Um, not so much that it was, you know, we weren't missing mortgage payments, we weren't behind on anything. Um, but he's been in tough spots before. Sure. And so he, when he offered, it's like, you know, I'm not going to turn it down, yeah. you know, let's do this. My accountant may be very unhappy. Our accountant may be very unhappy about the extra paperwork and, and, <laughs> and you know, the, the doing that, figuring that out at the end of the year. But, uh, that was incredibly helpful from him. Uh, and we've become friends in that time. You know, we're not just partners, we're friends. Yeah. Um, you know, we share a lot in our personal lives as well. Um, the third um, have to be my closest friend, confidant, um, compadre is uh, and is also a small business owner is, is Andre Vaughn. Um, he's a wordsmith and is just we speak daily, almost daily, um, at least an hour, at least an hour. Um, life, work, relationships, current events, past, present, future, you know, politics, you name it. it it's everything. We discuss it all. Um, <laughs> but his, uh, in, in his professional capacity as a wordsmith, um, he, he taught me a lot about, um, messaging and communicating with clients and, and how, you know, the you know saying this and getting this idea across mm. um you know it could be a little better you know you can improve by saying this instead of that you know this is the idea you're trying to get but this is what i'm hearing yeah um over the years uh, with all of the, the the free um work that he's given just in our daily conversations on the phone um, no matter the dollar amount at the bottom, if he invoiced me, wouldn't be enough. Wow. I, I I couldn't put a price on it. It's just the the improvement in my communication with 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 clients and with you know almost pretty much generally anybody. Yeah. Uh, the improvement from from him and speaking with him has just been outstanding. That's awesome. Um, also, he's able to see things that I don't because I'm too close, and he reminds me of that all the time. <laughs> and says, hey, you're too close to this. I'm not, but you are. You need to be careful. This is what you need to watch out for. Right, yeah. Uh, and so that's also very helpful because, yes, I stand way too close to things that I don't see, problems <laughs> down the road. And he's like, hey, pump your brakes, put your hazard lights on. This is what you need to see because you don't. Right. Um, so I would say those are the three that have had the biggest influence on me, for sure, Stay. by far. Appreciate you sharing. As you think about the next three to five years, what are the biggest challenges that you're going to face in um, reaching your goals? And who are the types of people you're going to need to help you to overcome those challenges? That's the three to five year question. That's the million dollar question, right? That's that's the most important one. Um, I mean, it's a little difficult, a little different now that I've transitioned into consulting. It's a wholly different environment than what I'm used to operating in. Yeah. Um, I don't see so many. Uh, the biggest 
probably the biggest challenge I would have to say um, is is keeping the business growth uh, sustainable and manageable. Sure. You know, making sure that you know, because I'm the I'm the only one now. It's just me. Yeah. Um, so making sure that I can handle the work that I have, but also to make sure that the phones are ringing. Yeah. Uh, the business is coming in. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the biggest challenge. Um, to the actual physical security integration industry where I, I mean, undoubtedly where I've the most experience at, I say the biggest challenge is going to be like any other industry, um, finding, uh, qualified employees. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody's have that issue now. Yeah. We have had that issue, um, for since before COVID, mm-hmm. um, and not only that, it's been a compounded problem with our industry because it's not just finding qualified. Uh, we are not a young group uh, in the state of Indiana. Uh, Department of Workforce Development figures put 38 percent of um, people employed in the state of Indiana listing uh, security technician, security alarm technician, you know, something along those lines. Um, 38% out of the total number of people within the industry are aged uh, 35 to 44. Mm. So it's not a young group. Um, It's not getting any younger. Um, You know, by 44, your knees and your back are are feeling every year you've put in the industry. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So finding qualified and younger people to get involved in the industry. I'm currently working with uh, Ivy Tech to get a certificate program started. Oh, great! Um, to train this younger generation and get them interested, awesome. get them involved. Um, the biggest challenge in that, though, is in, and this also goes to you know your question about the people that are going to be necessary um, to solve the problems is, uh, you know, we need to have a standard uh, measure mm-hmm. of what the certificate, the basic and advanced certificates are going to entail. Sure. Um, so in order to have that, I need to work with other security integrator owners and say, you know, listen, if you're hiring a guy who's got a, a piece of paper that says he knows how to terminate, you know, Cat 5 and Cat 6, he knows how to terminate, you know, RG59 and RG6, and, you know, he says he knows how to program an alarm panel. What we're, What are you looking for specifically? So. Um, I've got, you know, a lot of contacts and a lot of emails out to those contacts now to kind of build that standardization out. Um, again, there's a, a regional company headquartered in Indy, starts with a K, that they have their own training center, um, which is great if your company is big enough that you can afford that. Sure. Uh, a lot of companies in the small and mid-range, they can't. Yeah. And so working with them to develop a a a not just a certificate program, but a useful certificate program. That's awesome. Um, and to get younger people involved. That's also, um, you know, the main primary goal. Our industry isn't like uh, HVAC and mechanics and plumbers. It's like, well, this is what my dad did. So this yeah. is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. So we don't we don't have that in our industry very much. So <laughs> it's interesting. Earlier, you you spoke about the 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 getting the work and then being able to to deliver the work. So it, mm-hmm. it, it's something that we talk about. We call it the, the 50-50 rule. So, you know, 50% of our time should be focused on business development and 50% taking care of our, of our existing customers. And usually what happens is, you know, we start getting busy and then we stop doing the marketing, right? We focus yep. all on taking care of. And then, you know, three or six months later, it's like, oops, we we don't have any you know we don't have any more business coming in and we've already completed those projects. <laughs> uh oh, yeah. Yep. So, so being yep. always on on both and really thinking about that 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 balance that fifty fifty balance of if I'm spending more than fifty percent of my time taking care of existing clients, it probably means that I need to outsource or hire because I can't turn the marketing off as uh, so there'll be a, a, a negative impact in three to six months from now. Absolutely. I, I always would use the anecdote with, with our, with, with, with salespeople and, and, uh, and, and technicians, um, you know, I don't care what work we do. I know that we do security integration. 
I said, but, you know, I, I, you guys need to look at it from my point of view on my job and what I'm supposed to be doing yeah. is, um, is a lot like working a, a pipeline. You know, my job is to make sure that, you know, we always have stuff flowing through the pipeline from yeah. A to B, um, but also to make sure that if we need to branch that pipeline off to get it somewhere else, okay, then we can do that. Right. Without it affecting the flow downstream, without it blocking off everything so we can get that done. <laughs> uh, and then I would also tell them, and then I'm also the 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 psycho running around with duct tape, you know, <laughs> patching up holes yeah, in the yeah, pipeline yeah, yeah. all the way up and down. Right. Um, and so I, yeah, so the 50-50 rule, yes, I would, I would joke with my guys that for me, it's like a, a 50-50-15. Uh, that 15 115 percent of my time so 15 percent of my time is patching all these holes yeah. along the way and all the leaks that pop up yeah. um but yeah that's absolutely the case in in just about any industry so jim Rohn said that we become the average of the five people that we spend the most time with so as you think about that advice or, or think about that quote what advice do you have for business owners who are trying to do it on their own? So many good ideas, so many little time. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, from personal, all of these will come from lots of personal experience in the form of uh, stress, high blood pressure, heartbreak, anger, frustration, sadness. Um, I would definitely say the first, very first thing you should do is as soon as you can afford it, hire a qualified accountant and a qualified attorney. Mm -hmm. Very first, um, you know, I it, it's gut wrenching seeing new businesses um, fall and fail because they didn't hire a professional to do the job. Yeah. And you know, I would always tell you know budding business owners, it's like, listen, you're doing doing your pitch with a potential client. Part of that pitch, you know, should, if it isn't, should be why they're hiring you. Yeah. You're a professional. You know what you're doing. You have the experience. Um, you as a business owner need to do the same. Yeah. You know, don't hire the, the cheapest accountant or the cheapest <laughs> attorney, you know, get what you pay for type deal unless it's yeah. family. Then right. that's maybe a little different. Um, and then the, the big, the reasons behind those specific professions, accountant and attorney, um, is you know a single mistake with the IRS or uh, one lawsuit mm. can kill any small business, any startup business, right. uh, very very quickly. And you know not being prepared for that, you know it, it it breaks my heart when I see businesses, new businesses go down, even existing businesses because they didn't have qualified right. professionals. Sure. Um, number two. Um, Man, don't let your pride get in the way. Um, don't be embarrassed or scared uh, to ask for help. Mm. You know, even if you've got the most earth shattering idea, service or product, um, you know, there are a lot of people that can guide you to success right. uh, every step of the way in business, even if they don't fully understand what you do. Right. Or the product that you offer, the service, or whatever the case is, um, you know, people that are you know masters in and marketing and messaging, engineers, business coaches, um, you know, these are are professionals who, again, may not under fully understand what it is you do or the concept, right. yeah, but they can help you, and they're out there. They're waiting for you to reach out and ask them for help, and it's not always. You know, they're not always raising a red flag saying, hey, here I am. I can help you with this. Um, you got to speak them out a lot of times. And, you know, yeah, you're probably going to have to pay for their services. <laughs> but the the amount of money that you pay them, you know, your wordsmiths and business coaches and marketing people and, and experts and engineers, you know, sure. uh, the amount of money that you pay them. Is, uh, is is not going to pale in comparison to the amount of value that you're going to get from watching your business succeed and the work that they can help you put in to get your business 
to work for you instead of you working for your business, which <laughs> right? is the goal. Yes. Um, <laughs> unless you want to sell, then, you know, then sell, but you got to have a successful business. Yeah. Um, value. My goodness. Uh, number three, there is a massive, massive difference between value and cost. Learn the difference between the two. Please, please learn the difference. Um, you know, value is what you're offering potential clients. Cost is just a number. That's it. Um, and it's important to know the difference between those two things. You know, you're selling value and that cost is just a number on a piece of paper. That's not, that's all it is. It has no effect on anything. It's, it all comes down to value versus cost. Yeah. Um, but it's also important to know that that lesson, uh, and again, something I've learned the hard way many times, uh, that lesson's a two-way street. Every vendor, distributor, contractor, um, professional, expert, everybody you engage with, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Don't just look at the cost as a business owner and what these people are charging you. Look at the value that they're bringing to the table. Yeah. And, and if you're only focused on the cost, you're going to, you know, always be selling yourself short. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, high value, it costs top dollar. Right. And you have to be to a point to where, you know, you can afford to pay it. But by the time you can afford to pay it, uh, odds are you're either right on time to buying their services and paying for them, or you might be a little too late. Mm. Um, but it's important to know the difference between value and cost. Sure. Um, the last thing I would tell is, um, so that's, this would be four. Um, if you are, no matter what you're doing um, in your business with your new business, if you're overbooked, overscheduled, um, you're not charging enough for what you're doing. You know, um, if you're overbooked and overscheduled compared to your competition and you actually have, you know, competition, that typically means you're way underpriced from the competition and you're leaving a lot of money out on the table. Mm. Um, there, there are some business owners who subscribe to, the profit first methodology. Um, there are folks like me who focus on the client first mentality. Um, I won't say either of them is right. It all comes down to preference. Sure. Um, but that being said, you know, you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you're overbooked and overscheduled because you're not charging enough. Right. And I understand very, again, from a lot of firsthand experience, you want to be the nice guy. <laughs> you want to you want to be that helpful business owner uh, that you know. Oh, hey, you know, listen. It only took me ten minutes to fix your problem. <laughs> I'm not going to send you an invoice. Don't worry yeah. about it. It's fine. Yes. You know, your value as a business owner should be the most expensive when it comes to an invoice. Yeah. Um, if a client demands they work with you when you have qualified people underneath you that could do the job just as well as you could, but they demand to work with you. That is the top hourly rate. Yep. You know, clients have got to pay the top rate to get that. Um, you know, you're probably a little familiar with that, right? Yep, absolutely. Like, hey, you want, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I've got plenty of people to help, but you're yep. demanding that it's me. Okay, that's yep. going to be the top yep. dollar. Even um, the clients that I work with to build on what you're saying, right? We have them do time studies to, to mm -hmm. share back to me where they're spending their time and, and it's very common that a, a significant portion of their time is spent on $25 an hour jobs when, you know, their bill yeah. rate is 100, 200, 400, whatever it is. Right. And so like, wow, we got to we got to delegate that or outsource that or hire for that mm -hmm. right away because you're you're just losing opportunities with the business because you're doing those low value you know, jobs. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Your value as the business owner you know, has the highest value attached to it and always be cognizant of that. And remember, um, I would say probably that's, that's the best advice that I could give off the top of my head with our limited time. Yeah, that would be, it. that would probably be those, those, those four main things. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. So yeah. last question here, if, if something uh, catastrophic was to happen to the business, who's the first person you'd call and what would you want from them? Another great question. Um, depending on the problem, mm -hmm. I would say the likely first call would be to my attorney. 
our corporate attorney. Uh -huh. um, he has all of the necessary information, contact information, knowledge, paperwork, uh, access to everything um, to, to make sure that things can continue to operate smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, he knows, you know, obviously he's in communication with our accountant. He can make the call to the accountant to make sure payroll is get paid and to make sure bills are getting paid and things like that. Um, so again, it goes back to making sure you have a qualified attorney and accountant in your corner. Um, but I would say that even when your business grows to the point um, that you have a, 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 a trusted number two, mm. you know, you've got your go-to person in your own business, um, your attorney should have all of the authority uh, to act on your behalf um, and be ready at that moment's notice to protect your interests. Um, you know, because especially once you get to that point where you've got employees, um, you know, you've got people downstream from you that are relying on you for to pay their mortgage, yes. buy their groceries. <laughs> you know, uh, Duke Energy doesn't care that something happened to your boss. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, you, you got to pay us. Keep the lights on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I would say my first call would be to an attorney, uh, to my our, our corporate attorney. Um, but again, we have that set up to where, you know, he has all the power of attorney for the necessary things sure. to keep things running smoothly. Um, and then um, he knows to reach out within the company. OK, um, you know, we have a plan. I have a plan. Yeah. with my attorney because this you know contingency planning for businesses yes uh, what i do yeah. uh so <laughs> you know he knows that there's a list of people to call that can make contacts with my clients and let them know you know hey something has happened you know without giving away a whole lot of details yeah work is still moving forward unless i drop dead work is still moving yes. forward <laughs> things are things are still getting done um so yeah, that would be depending on most problems be the attorney. If it was catastrophic uh, financially, it would definitely be the accountant. Yeah, right. for for obvious reasons. <laughs> Alex, it sounds like you've been blessed with some incredible people who have helped you on your journey. If they were all on the show here today, what would you want to say to them? Uh, I mean, first of all, thank you. I mean, absolutely to to any and every single one of them. Um, there have been so many people in the journey, uh, bankers, um, uh, other small business owners, um, you know, folks that really just, you know, they took a chance mm. on, you know, at the time, a, a young guy, uh, who, who had a little bit more hair when he started. Um, I don't know. You probably, hopefully you can't see it in the video, but less, less gray as well. My beard um, took a chance on a young guy and uh, trusted their homes and their business security. Um, the things that mattered most to them. Um, they took a chance and, you know, wrote a check or swiped a card. Mm -hmm. um, the other business owners that, I probably made their ears bleed and, and made them roll their eyes whenever they saw <laughs> the caller ID or the text scroll across that it was me. I go, oh, Alex again. All right, let's block out 40 minutes. I'm going to be on this call for a long time. Um, you know, so many of those on the way and, you know, people that weren't even in the industry, yeah. but, you know, just other business owners that, you know, um, that I could call on and say, you know, hey, Here's this really weird question I have. How would you handle this? Um, and just listening to them and, and, you know, have them tell me, you know, oh, yeah, I've had something similar. This yeah. is what I would do. Yeah. Um, but I would say to them that, you know, without them, um, you know, there wouldn't be a Maverick anything. Um, there wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be on this podcast today. I wouldn't be on, you know, the other podcasts I've done. I wouldn't have the insight that I've got today. I would be, uh, and not to say there's anything wrong with this lifestyle, but I would be another nine to five drone, putting in my hours, clocking out at five, getting paid every Friday, uh, direct <laughs> deposit, you know, on the nose at midnight, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, never worrying about a budget or anything like that. Um I know my wife would be a lot less stressed about some things <laughs> uh, if that were the case. But, um, you know, there's um, 
you know, getting to getting to the the ability and to the point to where I could do those things yeah. um, and transition the company, uh, none of those things would have been able to be possible without so many different business owners. Um, so thank you would be the first and foremost and probably the only thing I would ever say yeah. to any of them or to a group of them. Um, and all of those checks that I wrote you guys that I told you to keep in your desk, and told you to hold on to that until I call or text and say, okay, it's, it's okay to deposit. Continue to hold on to those checks. <laughs> we're not quite ready yet, but I promise you that we're getting close. We're getting closer every day. I love it. Alex, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Tim. I always uh, appreciate the opportunity. As uh, as my mother said, have mouth, will travel. <laughs> to everyone who tuned in, thanks for listening to the Self-Made is a Myth show with your host, Coach Tim Camp. So be sure to help us spread this movement by liking the show and posting about it on your social media. And to join our movement, go to bemadtogether.com. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Make sure to pay it forward, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.